So how to build a probate-based business. And one distinction I want to make is I think their companies will, you know, the companies are around will sell you what they have to sell you. You know, if you go through life as a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You've heard that said. If you're in the business of selling data, then everybody you talk to looks like a prospect to sell data to. If you're a real estate coaching company, everybody looks like a prospect for your real estate coaching company. I'm not selling data. I'm not selling coaching. I'm not selling anything. I love to work with you. If you have a property to sell, I'd love to list it. If you need help, you're an agent, love to co-list it. If you need some help, you may need to list with me. I'm glad to help explain what you can do, give you some strategies. Um, glad to work with you. Uh, glad to get your help when I need things, work together on deals. A lot of my business is based on the relationships I have with other agents. So I have nothing here to sell you at all. Maybe someday I will, nothing today. But so I want to talk about how you need to look at this as building your business. Now, get very clear on where you are in your process, and we'll get to that in a second. And today we're talking about how we can help you achieve those goals. First thing I want to say, and, and one reason I say this is this time of the year, a lot of companies have business planning programs. They either schedule them in December because it's a slow time, or they schedule them in January, encouraging you to run through the finish line. But what I would tell you is that business planning is not an activity, it's a process. It's something you have to always do some amount of maintaining your plan. You have to write a plan and then you have to update your plan, and that's a continual process. So I just share with you, I write my, wrote my plan out when I, when I relaunched my business three years ago. Um, I've been in business since 1986. Three years ago, I found myself relaunching as a real estate salesperson, production person, out of, getting out of management. And I had to really think about where I'm going to be for the next five years. I was 60 at the time, and I wanted to have a five-year plan to exit, be able to exit the business uh, and just be a full-time investor. And so I sat down and wrote out a plan. I, I consulted to the resources and I literally spent a week with a, a pad, I used to keep it behind me, writing out ideas and brainstorming them, putting them into a Google document, organizing it. And I wrote it one time, I wrote a plan. But what I do is every quarter, I update the plan formally. And all year long, as I get ideas, I add them into my plan. And the rule I have is, I don't change my business plan in between quarters. Meaning, if I'm committed to something like expire listings or for sale by owners or probate real estate, I'm going to give it 90 days. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for 90 days. I might test it first. We'll get to that. That's called R&D. But if I'm going to do something. I'm planning to do it for 90 days. I'm going to monitor the results and see and give it time to grow and invest in it. But the planning process is, is a process, not activity. We all get interesting webinars, ideas. And then they go, they'll say, we well, have to buy it right now. We well, don't have to buy it right now. You can put it into your plan and then what's a quarter review and maybe add that somewhere down the line. But you can only do that if you understand that business planning is a process and really a constant process, not activity. And business planning is a tool for constant improvement. You're never going to write the perfect plan. The plan is for you to always get better and always get more productive and always get more profitable. And so that's the tool you're going to use to improve your business. So you're going to evaluate things. You're going to, have, you're going to share, uh, store new ideas, maybe to evaluate them, maybe to research them, maybe to test them. But you're constantly looking to improve things in, in any business. And think about it. It's only real estate where people do the same thing over and over again their whole career. Every business you go to is constantly remodeling, adding new products, testing new products, fast food places. They add tacos. They add hamburgers, cheeseburgers, all kinds of different variations on things looking for something that customers will appreciate better and bring more value to their customers. And so it's a tool for constant improvement. One of the lines that just drives me crazy is companies say, well, don't worry about business planning now, run for the finish line, which is, the, which is another way of saying, if you're lost in the middle of the jungle, don't stop and figure out where you are, just keep running. And the reason why companies do this, I used to work for broker that did this, and it drove me crazy, because most people are kind of lost in their business and not clear where they're going. Well, if you're not clear where you're going, just moving could either be the right direction, wrong direction, or up or down, we should go left to right. And what you don't want to do is just mindlessly continue if you're not doing well, if you're not making the progress you want to make. So you want to evaluate your results at certain times, certain metrics I review every week. And then formally, every quarter, you should evaluate where you are. So what happens is this is what coaches tell you to do when they know that you'll write your plan in January, never look at it all year until the next year they have an event. It's a disaster. 
you want to make sure you're constantly aware of where you're supposed to be headed. And you can't wait a year to track that. You've got to be tracking it daily or weekly, and then certainly quarterly at a significant level, and to make the corrections that might need to be made to be on your plan. Thank you.